Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. Continuing our journey with the Quran and today we're going to talk about the fourth juz of the Quran which is predominantly in Surah Ali Imran and then we're going to start inshallah Surah An Nisa. Uh, yesterday we talked about Ali Imran, who are Ali Imran and what's the meaning and the significance of this beautiful family, this blessed family of prophets and messengers and pious people. And we mentioned that Surah Ali Imran addresses not only the physical relationship between the believers and, the, and, and each other and the, other, the rest of the community, but it also addresses the spiritual connection that the believers have with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So as we mentioned yesterday, we have the supplication of Sayyidina Zakariya ala Nabina alayhi salatu wassalam, the supplication of Sayyida Maryam alayhi salam, and her mother before her when she pledged as Sayyida Maryam to the service of the temple before knowing the gender of uh, the baby to be born later on. In Surah Ali Imran, another main theme is talking about Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is telling us about the events of one of the major battles of the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam and that is the battle of Uhud. We all know that in the second year of the Hijrah of the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam there was the, the first major confrontation between the Muslims and the non-believers in the Battle of Badr, which is alluded very alluded to very quickly at the beginning of the narrative of the Battle of Uhud. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala reminds the believers about his bounty upon them, how Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala gave victory to the believers in the Battle of Badr when they were outnumbered and outarmed. So as if Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is telling the believers that uh, you're not going to be always victorious. Being victorious is according to the will of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. However, if you are always aligning yourselves with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala without obeying any commandment of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala or his messenger sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, you will be victorious. When you have your full reliance on Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, you will be victorious. However, when you disobey any of the commandments of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala or any of the instructions of his messenger sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, that victory is not a must. It's not something that's guaranteed that we are the believers and they are the non-believers, so we're always going to be victorious. And that example was made clear in the Battle of Uhud. The Battle of Uhud occurred in the third year of the Hijrah of the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, and always, as usual, the believers were still outnumbered. And at the beginning of, of the battle, they had the upper hand, they fought very bravely until the day was almost over. It was clear that they were going to win. And then uh, some of the companions of the Prophet wasallam misinterpreted or reinterpreted a clear commandment of the Prophet wasallam, a clear order. The Prophet wasallam told the archers to stay on top of the mountain, the mountain of Uhud, to having that higher ground is going to be it's going to be a better vantage point it's going to be easier for them to repel any counter attack of the enemy and the prophet's order sallallahu alaihi wasallam was do not abandon the top of the mountain until you receive other orders regardless of the situation if you see us winning and gaining do not abandon if you see us losing do not even abandon so stay put in your position until you receive the relief order so that you can now leave at the end of the battle. So at the beginning of the battle when the Muslims were victorious and advancing and the army of Quraysh seemed to be escaping from the battlefield, throwing away all of their weapons and all of their belongings to try to move away from the battlefield as light as they can, some of the archers disobeyed their leader, Sayyidina Abdullah ibn Jubayr radiallahu anhu, uh, and told him, look, the day is over, so we can reinterpret the order of the Prophet ﷺ and take it in a metaphorical sense rather than in a literal sense. And that's not what the order of the Prophet ﷺ, uh, that's not how it should be interpreted. He told them, remember, the Prophet ﷺ said, do not leave under any circumstances until you receive another order. But many of them disobeyed, left the mountain, left this strong position and they went down to start collecting the gains of the war that has been that have been thrown away by the fleeing army 
And that's when one of the geniuses of Quraysh, Khalid ibn al-Walid, at that time, the leader of the cavalry of Quraysh, when he saw that gap on top of the mountain, when he saw that the, the arrows are not coming our direction as they used to, he found that gap, so he had a counter attack, occupied that high position, and from that position, position, he with his cavalry started shooting arrows at the army of the Muslims in the plain underneath them, and that's when the tide started turning, and again, many of the companions of the Prophet وسلم, actually, 70 of the companions of the Prophet وسلم, were martyred on that day, including Sayyidina Hamza, عنه, the beloved uncle of the Prophet وسلم, not only were they killed, but actually what happened was something that's not in the honor code of the war among the Arabs, there was some mutilation of the dead bodies. So it was a sign of revenge. This is our revenge for the day of Badr when 70 of the leaders of Quraysh were killed. So an equivalent number today from the believers was also killed and many of the companions were also injured severely in that battle. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala giving us this context to tell us about the details, not only about the physical events which all those who witnessed it already knew about, but Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is telling us about what went in the hearts and the minds of the people. They did not declare it, but Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala who knows what's on the inside as well as he knows what's on the outside. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala chose to share that with us and inform us about it as the lesson learned. Because again, do not look at it as a defeat, but look at it as a learning process so next time you do not repeat the same mistakes. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala gives us the physical description of the battlefield with the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam arranging the rows and giving each group of people their position in the battlefield وَإِذْ غَدَوْتَ مِنْ أَهْلِكَ تُبَوِّئُ الْمُؤْمِنِينَ مَقَاعِدًا لِلْقِتَالِ وَاللَّهُ سَمِيعٌ عَلِيمٌ so Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is telling us that the Prophet sallallahu is supervising the battlefield and putting each group of companions in their particular location. And then Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala again takes us through the, uh, the events of the battle itself and takes us to the end of the battle when the believers, when they were under attack, again surprisingly, some of them were surprised. How come? The army of the pagans, the army of the idol worshippers, the army of the non-believers, how come they can have the upper hand? And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is responding to them that this is what happens when you disobey a commandment of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala or an order of the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is telling the believers and telling us that victory is pending obedience to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. This is the strongest weapon, the actually the only weapon that any army can have, can have is the support of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Anything else is debatable. Anything else is material. But the support of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is the most important, actually the only important factor in a uh, confrontation between truth and falsehood. In the preparation of, for, for the battle, and Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is giving us the details of the battlefield and the positions and so on, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala uh, gives an interjection about something that doesn't seem to be directly related to the battlefield and the armed struggle. However, when we look at it, it's completely related to it, where Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala gives an instruction, يَا أَيُّهَا الَّذِينَ آمَنُوا لَا تَأْكُلُوا الرِّبَا أَضْعَافًا مُضَعَافًا O you who believe, do not eat the, uh, the gains of usury, riba, and mudaafa, multiples of multiples of the money that you have lent, you're getting it back as multiples of what you lent the other people. Do not do this practice. Someone might say, and again, remember when we were talking about Surah Al-Baqarah, where Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala described that uh, those who do that as waging a war against Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and his messenger sallallahu alayhi wa sallam فَإِن لَمْ تَفْعَلُوا فَأَذَنُوا بِحَرْبٍ مِّنَ اللَّهِ وَرَسُولِهِ So here Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is telling that army to be victorious on the outside in the battlefield you have to be victorious 
on the inside, defeating your own selves, defeating your own greed, defeating your own practices that you were used to before being outlawed by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and forbidden by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is telling them about this instruction, not eating riba in the middle of the instructions of the battlefield because to be victorious, you have to defeat yourself first before defeating the external enemy. If you are internally defeated, there's no way that you're gonna defeat an external enemy. And then Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is reminding the believers uh, about his bounty upon them even when they disobeyed the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. Again, remember, this is not the end of the day. This is not the end of the story. This is a lesson to be learned. And for the lesson to be learned to have an impact and an effect, it's got to have a very high price. That high price was the martyrdom of these 70 companions, including Sayyidina Hamza radiallahu anhu. Rasulullah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, when he stood in the battlefield at the end of the day, when many of the companions had fled from the battlefield, and the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, who was injured on that day, he calls them, come back, come to me, come to fight the enemy, and they're not listening. They're running away, running in the mountains, as Allah Subhanahu Wa Ta'ala describes, اِتْتُسْعِدُونَ وَلَا تَلْوُونَ عَلَىٰ أَحَدٍ وَالرَّسُولُ يَدْعُوكُمْ فِي أُخْرَاكُمْ so you are running upwards upon the mountain, escaping from the battlefield and not even looking behind. And the Prophet ﷺ is calling you to come back. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala gave you a sadness on top of a, sad, of a sadness. The sadness of not obeying the Prophet ﷺ over the sadness of this partial defeat that happened in the battlefield. Now, many of the great companions of the Prophet ﷺ uh, fled on that day yet Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala forgave them and Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala describes after that وَلَقَدْ عَفَى عَنْكُمْ so again take this as a lesson to be learned more than a, a, a physical defeat or a partial defeat on that day the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam standing at the end of the day in the battlefield and seeing the body of his uncle Sayyidina Hamza radiallahu anhu mutilated completely mutilated his chest was cut open, his belly was cut open, his liver was cut out of his body and torn into pieces, his nose was, was cut off, his ears were cut off. So the Prophet ﷺ looked at that scene, which was not the norm in the wars among the Arabs, by the way, even in the days of ignorance of Jahiliyyah before Islam, that was not a common practice at all. This is a very heinous crime perpetrated by a few people. So the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam looked at that event with sadness, with anger. Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam was angry on that day and he Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam said, if Allah Subhanahu Wa Ta'ala gives me the chance, I will do to them exactly what they did to us. I'm gonna do, I'm gonna mutilate the body of their dead just as they mutilated the bodies of our dead and they desecrated them. And the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam had in mind certain people. Abu Sufyan ibn Harb, Khalid ibn al-Walid, Safwan ibn Umayyah, Suhail ibn Amr. These were the leaders of Quraysh, the leaders in, in that battle. And the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam was about to curse them. And I mentioned these names because later on, now actually, when we mention any of these names, we should say, radiyallahu anhum, because all of these individuals later on became companions of the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam and had a positive impact in Islam when we mention Sayyidina Abu Sufyan radiallahu anhu, Sayyidina Khalid ibn Walid radiallahu anhu, Sayyidullah al-Maslul, Sayyidina Suhail ibn Amr radiallahu anhu, Sayyidina Safwan ibn Umayyah radiallahu anhu. All of these later on became sincere companions of the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is teaching us a lesson. In fact, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala revealed an ayah to the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam and the Prophet وسلم, immediately understood the meaning of this ayah, so he calmed down. وسلم. Remember, the sole purpose of the message of the Prophet وسلم, was mercy. As Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, وَمَا أَرْسَلْنَاكَ إِلَّا رَحْمَةً للعالمين. So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is reminding the Prophet وسلم, do not let their ignorance change your character. Do not let that change your mission. Your mission is still 
mercy. So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala tells the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam in a very gentle way, لَيْسَ لَكَ مِنَ الْأَمْرِ شَيْءٍ أَوْ يَتُوبَ عَلَيْهِمْ أَوْ يُعَذِّبَهُمْ فَإِنَّهُمْ ظَالِمُونَ This is not a matter that you should worry yourself about revenge and retribution and doing to them what they did to you. That's not what you're sent for. You're sent for something for far more supreme and noble than that. So keep doing what you're doing. لَيْسَ لَكَ مِنَ الْأَمْرِ شَيْءٍ It's not your matter to worry about. Leave that to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And then Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, أَوْ يَتُوبَ عَلَيْهِمْ أَوْ يُعَذِّبَهُمْ فَإِنَّهُمْ ظَالِمُونَ Maybe Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will forgive them, will repent, or they, they will repent to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will accept their repentance. Or maybe if they insist on their ignorance and their defiance to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, they will be punished because they are oppressors. The Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam looked at the subtlety of this revelation. Which one came first? The punishment or the forgiveness? The forgiveness came first. أَوْ يَتُوبَ عَلَيْهِمْ أَوْ يُعَذِّبَهُمْ So he sallallahu alayhi wa sallam calmed down and had a faint smile on his face because he recognized sallallahu alayhi wa sallam that sooner or later these heads of tyranny, the heads of disbelief will eventually come to Islam. And this is, by the way, a trend when we look in the life of the Prophet وسلم, we find that many people, in fact, most of the people who used to fight the Prophet وسلم, and plot against him ended up before the end of the, their lives with the mercy of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala ended up seeing the light and embracing Islam and supporting the Prophet وسلم, and having an important role after the Prophet passed away. Those who insisted on defiance and insisted on fighting the Prophet وسلم, many of them also died as non-believers like Abu Jahl, like Utbah ibn Rabi'ah, like Umayyah ibn Khalaf and so on and so forth. These were the, the heads of the tyranny and they did not want to open their hearts or their minds to the light and the guidance coming from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala so they deserved to die as non-believers. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala instructs the believers again, there's a lot of lessons learned that come from the ayat. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is reminding the believers that your unity and holding tight to the rope of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is the secret to your victory. So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala reminds them, وَاعْتَصِمُوا بِحَبْلِ اللَّهِ جَمِيعًا وَلَا تَفَرَّقُوا وَاذْكُرُوا نِعْمَةَ اللَّهِ عَلَيْكُمْ إِذْ كُنْتُمْ أَعْدَاءً فَأَلَّفَ بَيْنَ قُلُوبِكُمْ فَأَصْبَحْتُمْ بِنِعْمَتِهِ إِخْوَانًا وَكُنْتُمْ عَلَى شَفَا حُفْرَةٍ مِّنَ النَّارِ فَأَنْقَذَكُمْ مِّنْهَا كَذَلِكَ يُبَيِّنُ اللَّهُ لَكُمْ آيَاتِهِ لَعَلَّكُمْ تَهْتَدُونَ Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is commanding the believers hold tight to the trope of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala which is the wahy that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala gave his messenger sallallahu alayhi wa sallam and the instructions given by the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam Hold tight to that. The practice of the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, the commandments from Allah Subhanahu Wa Ta'ala, do not go in different ways, interpreting them your own way and getting your own understanding. Listen to the instructions from the Messenger Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. So do not go in different directions. And remember, how you were before the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam came to you, you were infighting, you were killing each other, you were expelling each other from their villages, and Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala brought this guidance to you to unite you. فَأَصْبَحْتُمْ بِنِعْمَتِهِ إِخْوَانًا With the mercy of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, with the bounty of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, you became brethren, caring for each other more than caring for anything else. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala reminds this nation of the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, كُنْتُمْ خَيْرَ أُمَّةٍ أُخْرِجَتْ لِلنَّاسِ تَأْمُرُونَ بِالْمَعْرُوفِ وَتَنْهَوْنَ عَنِ الْمُنْكَرِ وَتُؤْمِنُونَ بِاللَّهِ you were the best nation created for mankind. Unfortunately, some people take this part of the ayah and they stop. And if they do, they just pre they imitate the behavior of Bani Israel when they said, نَحْنُ أَبْنَاءُ اللَّهِ وَأَحِبَّاءُ We are the preferred nations. We are the sons of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and his beloved ones. It never comes without strings attached. The love of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has 
a price to pay and the price is the obedience to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and to his messenger sallallahu alayhi wa sallam which is the spiritual part how is that going to be reflected outwards it's going to be through enjoining good and forbidding evil therefore Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala gives these preconditions for that nation to become the best nation created for mankind you enjoin good, you forbid evil, and you believe in Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Now, someone might have said, well, doesn't belief come first before enjoining good and forbidding evil? Yes. However, belief is an internal matter between the servant and Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. What is the outward reflection and application of that faith? It's enjoining good and forbidding evil. That's why Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala emphasized it in this ayah. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is taking us to individuals on that day. There was a rumor that was spread in the battlefield that the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wasallam was killed. And when that rumor started spreading, many of the companions felt despair and disappointment and they started throwing away their weapons saying that, all right, it's a, that's the end. That's it. The Prophet sallallahu alayhi wasallam has died, so that's the end of it we're going to die as well or we're going to surrender or whatever. But there was one voice that said, no, do not do that. The Prophet Rasulullah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam is a messenger. And there were many messengers before him Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. What if he's killed or what if he dies? Are you going to turn your backs and go back into disbelief? And that voice was Sayyidina Mus'ab ibn Umayr radiallahu anhu. Sayyidina Mus'ab ibn Umayr, again the first ambassador of the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam who helped with the will of Allah Subhanahu Wa Ta'ala spread Islam through Medina before the arrival of the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam who used to be the most pampered young man in Quraysh and now he is showing strength and faith and telling his brethren that get up, collect your weapons, let's resume what the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam has started and if it's true that he died, let's die on the same faith as he Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam did. And he said these words, مَا مُحَمَّدٌ إِلَّا رَسُولٌ قَدْ خَلَتْ مِنْ قَبْلِهِ الرُّسُلُ أَفَإِن مَاتَ أَوْ قُتِلًا قَلَبْتُمْ عَلَىٰ أَعْقَابِكُمْ وَمَنْ يَنْقَلِبْ عَلَىٰ أَعْقِبَيْهِ فَلَنْ يَضُرَّ اللَّهَ شَيْئًا وَسَيَجْزِ اللَّهُ الشَّاكِرِينَ And Allah Subhanahu Wa Ta'ala honored the words of this man who paid with his life for his belief and support for Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and his messenger sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala honored his words by putting them verbatim in the Quran, in the revelation to the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. So the ayah reads, وَمَا مُحَمَّدٌ إِلَّا رَسُولٌ قَدْ خَلَتْ مِنْ قَبْلِهِ الرُّسُلُ أَفَإِن مَاتَ أَوْ قُتِلْ إِنْ قَلَبْتُمْ عَلَىٰ أَعْقَابِكُمْ وَمَنْ يَنْقَلِبْ عَلَىٰ عَقِبَيْهِ فَلَنْ يَضُرَّ اللَّهَ شَيْئًا وَسَيَجْزِ اللَّهُ الشَّاكِرِينَ Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala reminds the believers that what's happening today is not unprecedented. There were other prophets and other leaders who led, leaders of faith, who led their armies for the sake of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And it's depending on the support of the followers to these leaders. There were so many prophets before with their followers. These followers did not show any sign of weakness, any sign of defeat, and therefore they, they deserve the support from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala takes us to another individual. Sayyidina Abdullah ibn Amr ibn Haram radiallahu anhu. So Sayyidina Mus'ab ibn Umayr radiallahu anhu, a beautiful example, who was martyred and his body was mutilated and when they looked for a shroud to cover him, his clothes were not long enough to cover him. So they covered his face and most of his body with his clothes and then his feet were covered with grass. Another companion, Sayyidina Abdullah ibn Amr ibn Haram radiallahu anhu, who had nine daughters and one son. So he told his son, one of us has to go to the battle today. We cannot go because someone has to take care of your sisters. And basically, it was the father's turn to go to the battlefield. He went to the battlefield, he fought bravely, and he was martyred, radiallahu anhu. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala honored him with a unique honor, a special honor for that 
great companion of the Prophet At the end of the battle, the Prophet called for the son Sayyidina Jabir ibn Abdullah anhu and told him, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala never spoke to anyone before face to face. It was always either through a messenger or through a barrier. Like when Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala spoke to Sayyidina Musa, والسلام, the barrier was the fire. And when Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala spoke to any other prophet, it was through a messenger, Sayyidina Jibreel alayhi salam. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala spoke to your father face to face without any barrier, without any obstacle. And told him, give me a wish. Tell me what do you wish? And Sayyidina Abdullah radiallahu anhu said, I wish that I would go back to life and fight again with the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala told him, my command is that once a person dies, they do not go back to life. So he said, oh Allah, then give the good news to those who are left behind me about what you have prepared for the martyrs, the beautiful enjoyment that you have prepared for the martyrs. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala revealed the ayah, وَلَا تَحْسَبَنَّ الَّذِينَ قُتِلُوا فِي سَبِيلِ اللَّهِ أَمْوَاتًا بَلْ أَحْيَاءٌ عِنْدَ رَبِّهِمْ يُرْزَقُونَ فَرِحِينَ بِمَا آتَاهُمُ اللَّهُ مِنْ فَضْلِهِ وَيَسْتَبْشِرُونَ بِالَّذِينَ لَمْ يَلْحَقُوا بِهِمْ مِنْ خَلْفِهِمْ أَلَّا خَوْفٌ عَلَيْهِمْ وَلَا هُمْ يَحْزَنُونَ Do not count those who are martyred in the path of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Do not count them as dead. Count them as ever living, as martyrs, as witnesses in the presence of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. They are being sustained by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in the best of sustainment. فَرِحِينَ بِمَا آتَاهُمُ اللَّهُ مِنْ فَضْلِهِ They're enjoying, enjoying the beauty and the, the things that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has prepared for them, the great treatment that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has prepared for them. And they are looking forward to their brethren who are left behind that someday they're going to join them. And then Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala tells the believers when the rumors were said again that Quraysh is coming back the following day to complete its mission and to exterminate the Muslims the Sunday because the Battle of Uhud was on a Saturday so Sunday Quraysh is coming back and they're gonna exterminate the weak and the injured and so on and Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala tells the believers that these are rumors and this is the shaitan who is trying to scare you of his allies do not be afraid of them and only be afraid of me Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala so these beautiful ayat are talking about, again, we chose some of the ayat. Of course, the, all of the ayat are so emotional when Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is inviting the believers instead of worrying, worrying about injuries and partial defeat and the dead and so on to rush to the mercy of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and to the forgiveness of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala وَسَارِعُوا إِلَى مَغْفِرَةٍ مِّن رَبِّكُمْ وَجَنَّةٍ, وجنة عَرْضُهَا السَّمَاوَاتُ وَالْأَرْضِ أُعِدَّتْ لِلْمُتَّقِينَ الَّذِينَ يُنْفِقُونَ فِي السَّرَّاءِ وَالضَّرَّاءِ وَالْكَاظِمِينَ الْغَيْضِ وَالْعَافِينَ عَنِ النَّاسِ وَاللَّهُ يُحِبُّ الْمُحْسِنِينَ وَالَّذِينَ إِذَا فَعَلُوا فَاحِشَةً أَوْ ظَلَمُوا أَنفُسَهُمْ ذَكَرُوا اللَّهَ فَاسْتَغْفَرُوا لِذُنُوبِهِمْ وَمَنْ يَغْفِرُ الذُّنُوبَ إِلَّا اللَّهُ وَلَمْ يُصِرُّوا عَلَى مَا فَعَلُوا وَهُمْ يَعْلَمُونَ Rush to the forgiveness of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and a paradise the width of which is the size of the heavens and the earth وَعِدَّتْ للمتقين, Prepared for those who are again المتقين, those who fear Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala those, those who are mindful of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala those who have, uh, always think about Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and what is the sign of that? They spend their money in ease and in hardship and they control their anger they do not let the anger get the best out of them so as the Prophet وسلم, told the man who came to him وسلم, asking for advice and the Prophet وسلم, knew that this man had a certain temper so the Prophet وسلم, told him لا تغضب. and the man asked again and the Prophet وسلم, repeated لا تغضب. He asked the third time and the Prophet وسلم, still repeated لا تغضب. Now some people misinterpret the word لا تغضب as do not get angry. No, that's not the meaning of لا تغضب. 
لا تغضب means do not let anger get the best out of you or do not let anger get the best of you or, or let it do not let anger control your actions so if you are angry and all of us get angry even the Prophet وسلم, would get angry but that would never change his character he would never say anything improper or behave in an improper way so that's the idea. to control one's temper and to control one's anger this is the advice of the Prophet وسلم, by saying لا تغضب by the end of the surah, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala uh, takes us on that spiritual journey again to contemplate the beauty of the creation of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So by the end of the surah come the ayah, إِنَّ فِي خَلْقِ السَّمَاوَاتِ وَالْأَرْضِ وَاخْتِلَافِ اللَّيْلِ وَالنَّهَارِ لَآيَاتٍ لِأُولِي الْأَلْبَابِ الَّذِينَ يَذْكُرُونَ اللَّهَ قِيَامًا وَقُعُودًا وَعَلَى جُنُوبِهِمْ وَيَتَفَكَّرُونَ فِي خَلْقِ السَّمَاوَاتِ وَالْأَرْضِ ربنا ما خلقت هذا باطلا سبحانك فقنا عذاب النار ربنا إنك من تدخل النار فقد أخزيته وما للظالمين من أنصار ربنا إننا سمعنا مناديا ينادي للإيمان أن آمنوا بربكم فآمنا ربنا فاغفر لنا دنوبنا وكفر عنا سيئاتنا وتوفنا مع الأبرار ربنا وآتنا ما وعدتنا على رسلك ولا تخزنا يوم القيامة إنك لا تخلف الميعاد very beautiful ayat that are talking about the beauty that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and the perfection that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has created around us and how we should always contemplate this beauty and how we should always look for the signs of the magnificence and the greatness of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in the perfection of the universe that he subhanahu wa ta'ala has created around us the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam used to say about this ayah وَيْلٌ لِمَنْ قَرَأَهَا وَلَمْ يَتَدَبَّرْ أو كما قال صلى الله عليه وسلم The mere translation of the meaning of the ayah that in the creation of the heavens and the earth and the in the rotation an alternation of the night and the day sunrise, sunset, the change of seasons, the change of hours of the day are signs for those who have minds and not only who, those who have minds as uqul but albab these minds are interconnected to their hearts so the mind the logical thinking the uh, is connected to a spiritual experience as well it's not just yes the sun rises at 5:15 or at at 6:15 6:15 and sets at 8 o'clock that is not it's not just the timing but it's the beauty of the sun rising and the beauty of the sun setting which represent the birth of a new day and the start of a new night. All of these are chances from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to renew our pledge to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and improve our relationship to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala day and night. And what is the behavior of those who contemplate and see this beauty? Those who remember Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala الَّذِينَ يَذْكُرُونَ اللَّهَ قِيَامًا وَقُعُودًا وَعَلَى جُنُوبِهِمْ They remember Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in every condition. Standing up, sitting down, laying on their sides. So under any circumstances, you are remembering Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, seeing the beauty in everything that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has created. Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam taught us a dhikr or a dua to say for every aspect of our lives. Whenever we wake up from in the morning, whenever we go to bed, whenever we eat, whenever we drink, whenever we're done with eating or drinking, whenever we go to the bathroom, whenever we exit from the bathroom, whenever we put clothes on, whenever we take them off, under any condition of the daily activities that we do, the Prophet ﷺ taught us how to always be connected to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala before we eat, Bismillahir Rahmanir Rahim, and if we forget, بسم الله أوله وآخرة When we drink الحمد لله الذي جعله عذبا فراتا برحمته ولم يجعله ملحا أجاجا بذنوبنا When we get out of the bathroom الحمد لله الذي أذاقني لذته وأبقى في قوته ودفع عني أذاه When we see something that pleases us الحمد لله الذي بنعمته تتم الصالحات When we see something that does not please us الحمد لله على كل حال 
and so on and so forth. We are always connected to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala through everything that we do every day. And when they remember Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala day and night, and when they look at the beauty of the creation of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, they will recognize that beyond and behind this beauty and this perfection, there's got to be a great creator subhanahu wa ta'ala. رَبَّنَا مَا خَلَقْتَ هَذَا بَاطِلًا سُبْحَانَكْ فَقِنَا عَذَابَ النَّارِ They immediately remember and we immediately remember that we are ultimately going back to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So we ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala with His bounty to protect us from the hellfire, recognizing that those who have been destined to the hellfire, they deserve it. رَبَّنَا إِنَّكَ مَنْ تُدْخِلِ النَّارَ فَقَدْ أَخْزَيْتَ You have truly humiliated the ones who go to the hellfire, the ones who see all of this beauty and do not learn their lessons and do not, the, this beauty does not lead them to understanding who Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is and, is and and worshiping him subhanahu wa ta'ala without any partners, partners or any associates. So we ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala at the conclusion of Surah Ali Imran to teach us about ourselves, about our strengths, and about our weaknesses and to make us learn lessons from every every failure that we have and look at this failure not as a failure but as a learning process leading us to become stronger better closer to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala whenever we feel weak it's only Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala who can give us strength whenever we feel strong it is through the will of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala alhamdulillah who made us strong so always be connected to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and deserve the description that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala gave to the nation of the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam Kuntum khayra ummatin ukhrijat linnas ta'muruna bil ma'roof wa tanhawna anil munkar wa tu'minuna billah We ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to make us among this nation and to make us an embodiment of these three pillars enjoining good, forbidding evil and believing in Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and being willing to pay the price for that and ready to pay to pay the price for that because Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala told the believers kathira. You are gonna be tested in your faith. You're gonna be tested in your wealth. You're gonna be tested in your health. You're gonna be tested in your livelihood. And you're gonna hear a lot of criticism and attacks and harassment from the people of the scripture before you and from the non-believers. They're not going to leave you alone to enjoy the peace of mind and worshiping Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. That is not in this life. This peace of mind is only going to be in paradise. The complete peace of mind is going to be in paradise. But this life is going to be full of harassment, full of challenges. And it's only through Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala through our fellowship of his messenger sallallahu alaihi wasallam that we will endure that so that when we face Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and he subhanahu wa ta'ala asks us what did you do about the faith that I gave you the instructions that I gave you the guidance that I sent your way we would say oh Allah we enjoined good we relayed that goodness to other people we forbade evil we tried to stop the evil wherever it was and we were patient in paying the price for that 